exciting intro. Hello and welcome to Winter's Edge. My name is Matt and I'm going to be the Dungeon Master for this episode. Our adventurers find themselves a patron and the patron sends them into the wildlands to track down a lost tomb. Now the adventurers are going to be punching well above their weight so there should be a total party kill in the next two episodes. But let's see how they go. They've got high hopes and a lot of confidence and that's not going to get them far. Thank you for watching. Recap of where we're at. <laughs> Jake killed an old lady and the town hates you. <laughs> but four patrons did come in and offer you deals. It was um, the bridge holder, Bolf, who just says you get money for any snow walk hands you bring in as a sort of bounty. He wasn't happy with you guys though. There is Trup, the half-orc alchemist, who um, offers to for you to go into the wilds, go to areas where she knows herbs and flowers are, see what you can collect and bring them back, and she'll pay you by the herb and flower. Uh, she uh, has a little list which she can provide if that's a path you're interested in going down. Um, there could be nothing at the points you go to, so you might have to move around into, uh, the wildlands a bit and explore and forage. Um, and then there was No Name from the Retributors who uh, offered you bottom rung of the ladder for this Guild of Assassins where you're basically just collecting proof that their assassins have killed people out in the wildlands. And then there was Bone Boy who's the collector, a little goblin necromancer who wants to give you guys spirit traps which you'd take out into the wildlands and try to just catch some minor spirits which he then tames for an underground wisp tournament. Um, so yeah, are you guys leaning any way at the moment? You guys can... They, they, they all say, um, we'll give you time to discuss and there's a little room where you guys can wander into and sit around a table and, and weigh up your options. Cool. I don't know about you guys, but I'm kind of leaning towards the um, <clears throat> the Guild of Assassins thing where we go and collect the bodies. Yeah, it seems to be what we're good at. <laughs> yeah. I just think it like, I, I quite like the, the spirit capturing thing as well, but I feel like if we're gonna go and find the bodies of these people, there might be loot on them at the same time. Mm -hmm. So it could be like a cool like double thing there. <laughs> I just want it for the protection. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that coming along with that is quite cool. Are we, is it possible, can you only go with one patron at a time? Well, no, you can totally negotiate. And yeah, especially for a lot of those foraging ones, it just depends how far you want to push it to what you forage. Um, they only pay you for what you bring back, so yeah. if you don't bring back anything, that they're not out of pocket. Um, they do offer, like the alchemist offered 15% discount on all her potions, and um, Bone Boy didn't offer you anything extra, but um, if you wanted to get into buying <laughs> souls and spirits, he'd probably give you a discount as well. Because that could be quite cool if we wanted to, like, say, make like one of them the main thing, like collecting the bodies or the dog tags from those dudes but then also like i don't know trying to capture a few souls like at the same time but have it as like a secondary thing i yeah. definitely want to do soul capture yeah i'm quite keen on the soul capture stuff as that well works for me what about you nibbles yeah nibbles just wants protection so. <laughs> yeah <laughs> nibbles is life is threatened yeah. once again yeah <laughs> more people hate nibbles. Yeah. <laughs> okay so you guys made your decision yeah yep as you come out though um, there's a sudden murmur and noise and, and you hear the doors open and this tall, athletic looking older man with sort of long brown wavy hair, a moustache well dressed in a white shirt with a vest comes storming in and he says, sorry, sorry to be late chaps, I've just heard what you've said and behind him you see like this little entourage and then you see um, members of the press come in and they fill in a gallery on the side and they all take their seats and um, when he walks in you see all the other these four patrons sort of groan and put down their um, put down their folders and dossiers whatever and 
the assassin lady, no name, says, oh, are you going to slum it now with us, Gunther? And uh, Gunther says, no, not at all. We're dealing with celebrities here. The talk of the town. And you lot know, wherever the attention is, you will find me at the centre of it. <laughs> now forget what this riffraff offered you. No offence to the retributors, of course. No name. But you'll be starting these guys off on the ground floor and there's not much money in there. Um, yes, yeah, so I, I doubt if they're offering you... What do we, what do we call you lot? Pick on the boys. Pick on the boys. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just go with the boys, shall we? <laughs> and he, he turns to one of his entourage and says, we're going we're gonna to have to work on that. And <laughs> you see this sort of effeminate elf behind him with a purple doof of hair and says, yes, yes, I'll come up with something. They're already calling them the White Slayers. <laughs> <laughs> And, and Gunther goes, oh, perfect, because we're sending them out into the great white wild lands where they'll do lots of slaying. And Al's going, no, no, but for the other, other thing they did. <laughs> oh, yes, we might be able to twist that. And he, um, then he says, uh, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, they can't be offering you much. And let me introduce myself. I am Gunther. Some say they're great, and I'm not going to stop them, of course. And I run the Wildgate Adventurers League. Uh, one of the top four Patreons here in Wildgates. Um, normally, I stay away from this lower tier stuff. But word is spreading rapidly of what you achieved today. <laughs> Betty the White, beheaded. The lovely, lovely Betty the White. And he leans to his guy and says, are we getting a statue or something? Oh, excellent, excellent. Let's uh, donate some money towards that. And you see people writing <laughs> stuff down. <laughs> now, he says, now why am I offering to take you on? Because my business is word of mouth and I deal in information. And well, everyone hates you at the moment and is talking about you. So for me, any publicity is good publicity and it keeps me at the forefront of possible sources. And they, when they think of Wildgate, they need to be thinking of me. So I'm going to take you on while the fire is hot. And of course, you'll be punching well above your weight and probably die. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what are we going to do if they die? And the elf says, well, you, you will uh, narrow your eyes grimly and say, that's for Betty White. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I look like a hero. Yes, perfect. Perfect. And, uh, yeah, I take credit for killing you if it all goes wrong. Anyway, so it's going to be what I offer is high risk, high reward. I'm going to say to you, say 2,000 gold to your party if you complete this adventure, this quest that I have for you, and I will supply you with the various magic items to try bring you up to the level required to complete it. And if you die, I've got other adventuring parties that can go and reclaim back all my magic items. Those magic items are a loan, of course, something you can pay off while you're in my employee. Um, we have a wide range that we can lend you. As well as mounts, we've got a herd of yak worms that are uh, very good in the snow, and they'll take you there. Now, normally, I'd send a more experienced crew, but uh, let's see how you go, and um, yeah, so what do you say? If you want to pick flowers and catch wisps, you can talk to these folk for side work. I don't mind what you do. If you, that's all you want to do, it might be the smart thing because far less risk involved, but again, far less reward. Um, and if you're not prepared to reach for glory and die and rather play it safe, then choose these four. And as a DM, I'll warn you that, yeah, this is a way harder, <laughs> higher <laughs> level. Um, it would be around what I'd aim for a fifth level party. But you will be given um, a choice of magic items that will give you a 
bit more armor class and a bit more saving throws and uh, things like that. But I'll be pretty ruthless and it could be a total party wipe. But again, the reward is 2,000 gold and you've already got your foot in one of the top Patreons. So again, he says, uh, so back to the room, I guess, and uh, have another talk. But uh, hopefully you will join me. It's a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of money. Yeah. I don't think I'll definitely money. be about it, eh? The fuck you, babe. Yeah. We've lost the fight, yeah. mate. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. We haven't. <laughs> Kill Betty White. Easy. Okay, so you're gonna come out and then take his offer? Is it right? Yeah, right. Uh, yeah. Right. yeah right. why not? Yeah. Should we see yeah. if we can still do the, like the reavers? The reavers, yeah. yeah. Be their protection. <laughs> oh, you can, yeah. You guys can on that because then if like we're going out, we just see the bodies, then we can just grab the thing that we need to get off them. Yeah. Okay. So there's a bit of extra gear, eh? Mm. Okay, so you'll come out and he'll say, "So, what is your decision?" Or well, nothing. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. We're Excellent. Right. So what I'll do is I'm going to shoot off. I've got lots to do, but I'll leave Luthius here. That's the elf. Um, and he'll take you to my estate. You'll be put up in rooms there and taken to the vault and told all about the, uh, the journey and what you need to do to fulfill your obligations for the contract. And uh, yeah, then we'll do a big sending off because we want the world to know about you, that's why I bought the press. They're going to be asking you some questions, get to know you, and uh, how yeah. long? Hold, hold on, how long is this all going to take? Um, how long? You see this um, old sort of ranger, um, and he goes, "Oh, how how long, old Tom? How long?" And old Tom <laughs> steps forward and he says, "It's about three and a half days there, three and a half days back. I don't know how long it's going to take to, to clear out this uh, this tomb." And he says, don't tell him about that just yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and he says, I'll leave it. You can ask all these people the questions. I've got much more important things to be doing. And he, he walks off. And then the, the uh, Luthier says, okay, uh, we'll have some questions from the press, shall we? We'll go around the room. Has anyone got questions for um, Big O, I believe, Big O? And you... Uh, See a gnome, an old gnome, put his hand up and he says, hang on, I've got questions prepared for each of you. <laughs> he says, my name's JJ Jimison. I'm the editor <laughs> <laughs> of the Wildgate Gazette. Um, this is one of your classic characters that's going to come back and we're going to kill him. Don't oh, kill him yet. <laughs> Brigo, you are clearly the leader of this group. <laughs> Was it your plan from the start to decapitate Betty the White? <laughs> oh, well, fuck you. You know, bro, like, there's a lot of uh, unknown variables that can come into play when you're having a bit of a scrap, eh? You know, all I told the boys was, you know, to dig deep, go hard, gamma two halves and stuff like that. You know, things happen. You know, we didn't really want to kill the old lady. Nibbles got a bit out of control, but you've also got to do what you've got to do to win. We're not from here. We didn't know Betty's history. It is what it is, bro. Uh, you know, you put yourself in that ring. What happens in the ring stays in the ring. We're all aware of the consequences. Me personally would prefer if she didn't have, wouldn't have died, but mm -hmm. you know, here we are. Okay, he's writing that down and you see him writing, Nibbles was out of control. <laughs> uh, no orders to kill Betty White, but did it anyway. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Bingo. Um, and then you see a half walk who's in there. And he says, hi, my name's Mock Mad One, um, and I cover the arena events. Sort of like, sort of like the sports guy. And he says to you, Big O, you didn't seem to do too much in that fight. What do you think you bring to the team? Oh, you know, sometimes you've got to lead from the back as a general, mate. Um, it's not always about being on the front lines. You've got to, you know, make sure that your team's doing what they're doing. It's what we train for. It's what they're here for. Um, and as you can see, we were pretty effective in that. So I prefer you don't question my captaining methods. Um, just look at the results for yourself. A lady got decapitated in one go. Um, again... <laughs> wasn't what we wanted to happen, but in terms of effectiveness, I would say it was pretty good because, you know, look what happened, they fell apart, um, and that's, that's kind of the end goal there, mate, so, you know. Excellent, excellent. And our follow-up question, you seem to be carrying a lot of alcohol on your person. <laughs> Are you drunk right now? <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, you know, yeah, yeah, probably, eh? Yeah. <laughs> I definitely had a swig before we went in, you know, just to ease the nerves and stuff like that. Never been in front of this many people before, but, um, yeah, nah, it's all good. I don't, you know, teach their own, bro. Okay, he's writing furiously, <laughs> taking all this in, but he seems really pleased, like he's got a great angle on the drunk captain there. He's quite happy to see Betty die. And then they, and then Lethus goes... Um, and for Nibbles, any questions? And all the hands go up. <laughs> <laughs> and JJ Jimison says, Tell us, Nibbles, what was going through your mind when you tore Betty's head off? <laughs> He's a hard hitting journalist. Well, I'd met Betty the night before, and <sighs> she said that she was going to magic missile my ass, I think were the words, and I just wanted to give her a little scratch. Uh-huh. Um, but you see, I didn't realise that a little scratch for me is decapitation for someone else. For a little old lady's little old lady neck. Yes. <laughs> I can see how that mistake would be made. And he's writing furiously. And uh, then Molly Mook, this uh, halfling lady, stands up and goes, Gossip about Colin. So you were with Betty the night before? Is, <laughs> is that what you're saying? Um, how many nights have you been seeing each other? <laughs> and she's writing furiously. We don't need just met the night before. Oh, so just a one night stand, and you were a jilted ex lover? <laughs> Is that what? And she's just riding furiously. Uh, no, 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 we, no, no, we didn't. Not we didn't, a lover? We didn't sleep together, no. Oh, okay. Um, well, I'll, I'll see how I can turn that. <laughs> and, and then you see this. Um, Sort of rain, uh, a guy in a hood, he's got a black beard, uh, looks outdoorsy and that, and he says, Hi, I'm Ranger Took. I cover the adventuring beat in this, uh, in this Wildgate Gazette. Um, and so this will be your first time in the Wildlands, I believe? Uh, yeah. Uh, how do you think you will go against real challenges and beasts rather than old ladies just looking for a fresh start in the world? <laughs> Um, this isn't my first rodeo, so I think uh, I think we've well you wouldn't know us before, but like we're all we're all you know we've we've led a ship mutiny and protect, protected the captain who's now dead. You've uh, led a mutiny. No, a ship. no, we prevented a mutiny. Sorry. <laughs> um, then we we saved a printing press from goblins. Uh huh. So very heroic stuff is what you're saying. Yeah, and then we escaped Pirate Lord Vol's clutches. Oh, so he's looking for you. No, no, we just got kicked out of the city. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and he's, he's writing that down. He says, thank you. And then Mock, the half-walk, says, uh, and could you talk us through your amazing run across the arena? And could the play have got any better for you? That was kind of the perfect result, right? <laughs> Uh, yeah, the, the, the run across the arena was like straight to Betty because... Uh-huh, you, you straight might, to Betty, you <laughs> that down. You may have noticed I screamed her name a few times. <laughs> that was the night before or during the arena? <laughs> uh, during the arena. I see, we, I see. We, we had a little rivalry, you know. Uh-huh, and you took it too far? A little rivalry? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was, she was a good lass. But, uh, <laughs> was, was, yes. <laughs> Underlining was. And uh, so he says, thank you. And then he turns and says, I have a question for Zeph as well. Uh, your sleep spell was obviously the play of the game. Uh, can you talk us through that? I don't know how I did it, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, true, I don't know, man. I, I saw him do it and I was like... I see what that was, yeah. Oh, so you can just pick up spells <coughs> from watching your opponents? Sure, let's go with that, yeah, yeah. Wow, amazing. And as a follow-up, can we talk about your sportsmanship for a moment? You clearly tried to electrocute Doomblade <laughs> after the match was over. Was your aim to kill everyone in the Dangerous Four? You know what, I think I was just got a little carried away. Uh-huh, like yeah. Nibbles do. Like, like, I'm from your, you see, and I don't really get to let it out all uh-huh. that often. I see, some sudden freedom, 
has turned you into a serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't kill anybody. <laughs> attempted. Potential serial killer. Can you that... be an attempted serial killer? <laughs> <laughs> is that really a thing? It's, like, it's does a that mean point. you just try to kill a lot of people? It's a good point. I'll revise that. Thank you. And any questions for Arthur? And Molly Mook, the gossip columnist, just says, I've got one. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> Our source indicates that you were saving yourself for marriage. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's total hearsay. Yes, Not uh, true. <laughs> no potential Mrs. Halfbelts on the horizon? <laughs> no, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. Deny strongly. Okay. And they all say... Thank you, thank you, and uh, pile out. And um, so the other four patrons that were still sitting there um, said the, say, the no name, the assassin lady says, um, Gunther has made it clear that you can also uh, do side jobs for us if they're on the way. Um, are you interested in such a thing? I think we're always interested in extra coin. Now, the problem is he will have a clear direction he wants you to go, and I have a clear direction I want you to go. Um, I don't know if they um, overlap or are in two different directions. So I can um, mark on the map where I need you to go, and, and then when you see where Gunther needs you to go, we can see if we can make a deal. Yep. Yeah, yeah. sounds yep. good. <clears throat> and Bone Boy's like... Well, you can drop my traps anywhere most nights and uh, see what you catch. There's better areas to place them, which I can mark on a map, if you're interested. That was yeah, my goblin one. voice, not my voice <laughs> breaking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we could, we could take them and just drop them, drop them overnight. Yeah, and the <laughs> alchemist also says, and also I have locations I mark on a map where... I think we've got a bit too many locations marked on this map at the moment. <laughs> she looks really dejected <laughs> and says, okay. I don't know, what, why don't we just get the thing anyway? Yeah, like yeah. if it's just a mark on a map and we don't have to get it, does, is that cool? Like, yeah, she says, I will just pay you for what you bring me. I'm yeah. always looking for ingredients. And I'll... Um, and she provides a small book with the pictures of the... Cool. Different, and you can see there's actually different... Um, prices. She's got prices of what she'll pay, and there's some common things that you might have a good chance of foraging, and there's some rare things that are actually worth quite a bit. One's worth 200 gold if you come across it, um, because that's used to make a potion that's worth about 500 gold. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so what I'll do later on is I'll provide you guys with a map with all these different locations marked for each each person, and then I'll provide you with Gunther's one. And with Gunther's one, you're probably going to almost have to go straight there and straight back yeah. to, if you want to make your time frame. Good nine days, right? <laughs> That's yeah. cool. Yeah. Okay. And then Luthius says, well, come with me and we'll sort you up in Gunther's estate. Um, follow me. Makes his way through Wildgate. You again find yourself leaving this arena. It was a little ways off the main town. The main town is these old... Uh, buildings made out of this grey, almost lava, volcanic rock. It's quite a, a dingy town because it's made, um, made out of all this rock and it's under the shadow of this huge craggy ta uh, tower made out of this uh, dark lava rock. There's a lot of colour added to it though because of the adventurers, the tents and, that have been put in certain locations. Uh, so there's a, there's a bit of a mix there. And you weave your way through these streets um, Occasionally hearing boos and hisses and that's the rabbit there, that's the one there. But you're walking with Lucis, who's well recognised, and uh, so everyone knows you're under. Oops, I just switched my laptop off. <laughs> everyone knows you're under Gunther's uh, Gunther's rule. You make your way to where the overlook was. He says, Let, "Let's pick up you. Have you got any stuff in the overlook?" I mean, probably like the stuff that we bought, like the the cold weather gear and yeah. shit like that. I don't think we've actually really bought that much. No, well, we, we, had, we, had a, we had a cart, right? Cork had the cart, so yeah. most of our supplies would have been with that. Which he's been looking after. Mm. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, we'll say when you get to the Overlook, he's 
sitting out there with his car and says, what did you guys do? I've, uh, <laughs> I've been kicked out of the overlook. <laughs> Well, just was it us? <laughs> yeah, Every, yeah I, so his eyes turned to nipples. I, uh, I accidentally beheaded an old lady, but it should be okay. What was her name? Uh, Betty. <laughs> Betty the White. My wife? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a plot twist. Yeah. <laughs> and he says, oh, I've never heard of her, um, but I'm sure you had a good reason to do it. Yeah, it was an accident. An accidental beheading? That happens more than... Partially my fault. She was asleep when it happened. <laughs> I think it might be this cork's a power cork. <laughs> well, that happens. You you get too powerful. I've given you two. Um, let's have a look at all your corks. <laughs> <laughs> no, he doesn't say that. <laughs> um, yeah, and so he says... And Luther says, well, if this is your wagon and one of your retainers, he can uh, stay with you at uh, Gunther's estate. So come on. And so Overlook's on one side of the castle and he leads you to the other side of the castle, still looking out over the ravine. And you see four smaller castles, each with their own little wall. And he says, these are the four patrons here. Um, we don't talk about the other three at this time. Let's uh, just... Stay here with Gunther in the Adventurers, uh, Wildgate Adventurers League. And he walks through this uh, stone lava, rough hewn wall, and you find yourself in this estate. And in this estate, there's a stable on one side, and you see these massive, shaggy, almost caterpillars that are, uh, there's about eight of them. And they're all just staying there, milling around in the snow, eating, eating some hay. And... Uh, and he says, those are the yak worms which you'll be taking out. They move very well on the snow. And the best thing about them is they can just burrow and hide whenever needed. So you don't have to worry about leaving them behind or anything like that. And he takes you in and says, here's your rooms here. You've got another nice room that overlooks the uh, Sword Drag Valley. And you can see out the window to the other castle across the ravine and the Great White out in the distance. Great white. <laughs> <laughs> white slaves. And he says, and so you leave your stuff here and Corks grabs a bed and throws his backpack and everything in a chest at the end of it. You've each got a bed with a chest. Um, nice roomy, quite well, uh, well furnished little area. And then he takes you out of there and you go through a few rooms. You can see there's rooms for adventurers just to hang out. There's a library, there's um, a big dining area. As you walk past, you see um, another group of adventurers that are just uh, sitting there and they eye you carefully. And as a side note, they will be your next characters if you have a total TV game. <laughs> 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 and you'll be your first quest will be to retrieve your guys' bodies <laughs> and complete the quest they couldn't. So, yeah, I totally recommend starting to think of a fifth-level character <laughs> that you can build on the side. That's basically an adventurer. Um, and, yeah, he, he then leads you down this stairway and, and you come down into what seems to be quite a big um, underground basement area. And part of that basement actually has a cave hole that goes out and you can see out into the valley again. It's like another way in, but um, no one can possibly get there. And there's lots of big bars along it, but you can see through it. And he says, down here, and as you're um, walking through, you can actually see these large constructs that are just walking around, uh, sort of big almost ape-like creatures about your height, but um, massive and solid, made out of clockwork and uh, metal. And they each have one big seeing eye, which is just scanning the place as they walk. You make about four of them walking in a, in a circle. So we keep all our uh, magical items and everything down here for our adventurers. We keep everyone well equipped 
It's one of the perks of being in the job. Now you'll get your basic adventurer's starting pack each. Um, you'll get one bag of holding and a rope of climbing to take with you. And each of you get uh, one of these. And he hands you each, he picks up these sacks and hands them to you. They're not big. And he also hands you a belt with potions in it each. Now in the sack is a ring of warmth you'll get a ring of protection plus one braces of defense plus one and a luck stone oh no shit <laughs> so and sorry what was, yeah there was a ring of warmth that just means you don't have to really worry about the cold out there yeah. but you also get co uh, cold resistance yeah which can come in handy against some of the creatures out there yeah and a ring of protection plus one That's pretty hectic, eh? Ring of protection. Yeah, and braces of defense plus one. So it gives you another two armor class. When I transform, I don't get the benefits, right? Um, do you get a different armor class of the creature? I don't know about rings, though. Um, I might pay to check. Yeah, because I need to check on, like, I get a dexterity bonus to my AC if I'm not wearing armor. Yeah. But then I'm like, does that only count towards body armor or is that like any sort of armor? No, braces of defense don't count as armor. Okay. So yeah, you'll get bonuses from both of those. And a luck stone. And a luck stone. Fuck yeah. What do luck stones do again? They gave you plus one to like all of your ability checks. Um, there was a few other things that it gave it to as well. It was it's pretty good. Like. For yeah, what it does yeah. overall, it's like a massive stat boost. Yeah, it gave it to um, a plus one to your buffs too, which, yeah. you said, which was pretty crazy. So um, if you do cast a bless, I think it gives you... I'm going to have to look up how that works. because I. Yeah, I'll give it a Google as well. Yeah. So like, I can't actually use all these things because the uh, tap requires a human. And so How much can you attune to? He's only three. So, it's, yeah. So, there's, let's say the Ring of Warmth doesn't need attunement. No, oh, because these are all magic items, eh? Yeah. Yeah. But <clears throat> for the purpose of this campaign, let's not worry about the attunement for these. If you can override it. We should be able to add all this stuff into the D&D &D inventory anyway, right? Mm. I've just written it down, but I'll, like, go on and... Yeah, I can't find braces of protection. Ah, uh, braces of defense. Braces of defense. Yeah. And the potion belt contains three potions of healing and two potions of heroism. Belt. So is it three times? Three potions of healing. Yeah, it says um, one equipment functions as normal, but the DM decides whether it's practical. So it's, okay. up, it's up to you. Yeah, I know I'm boosting you guys a little bit because you're... And two, was it two potions of heroism? Um, three potions of heroism. Oh, sorry, two of heroism and three of healing. Yeah. 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 Don't give them worry, man. <laughs> the potion of heroism gives you ten temporary hit points for an hour and the bless spell, which doesn't help you too much, Joe. Yeah, fucking bless is so good. Especially in the early levels, eh? Mm. Especially if that luck stone um, affects it too. Yeah, yeah. I'll have a mad Google of that stuff when we get mm. when I get home tonight and see what yeah the good. deal is with all that. So if I just say that the ring of warmth doesn't need attunement, yeah, because then why I can do the the uh, protection things and that'll add to my AC. Yeah, and you can use the luck stone too. Yeah, cool. Luck stone. You also see lots of other items there, um, but at this stage, Ooh. Luther says, um, we won't be giving you anything, any of these, but you do see weapons and armor and everything. But, and he says, these are at discount to our adventurers. And if there's a critical mission, we'll often uh, suit them up and supply them to help them complete it. But the mission you guys will be doing isn't critical it's an exploration mission um 
what the patrons are allowed to do in the wild is claim discoveries and we've had rumor that a recent earthquake has unearthed the side of a tomb but the explorer that provided us the information said he couldn't push too far into the tomb because of a snow spider infestation um, so he's come to us and he'll get a cut but if we get you guys there and get you into the tomb and we have a mapper cartographer historian um, and storyteller who will be going with you to document everything then we can claim that tomb at, under the adventurers league and yeah as we as we said it's three and a half days out um, we'll be giving you a guide old tom which uh, spoke up at the thing he knows the the way there and the ways of the wild and uh, will assist you in getting there he won't be going in with you though he'd wait outside and the cartographer doesn't fight and please try keep her alive <laughs> she's <laughs> she's pretty vital and we'll introduce you to to them shortly now is there anything else he, and he, he basically says so uh come on we'll take you out of this place if we can't leave you in here alone the only reason these constructs aren't attacking you is because you're with me um, and he ushers you back upstairs and says but everything from upstairs you have uh, free run of and can come and go oh and he hands you each a whistle as well and says each of these whistles is attuned to your um, yak worm outside uh, so when they burrow and you need to call them back you just blow the whistle uh, and so keep a hold of that take a note of that worm pocket <laughs> worm pocket yeah, yeah. And he says, but uh, there's, it's been a busy day for you all. You've uh, achieved a lot today. Even to catch Gunther's eye it requires a very special kind of uh, event, which you guys have achieved. Um, you can wander around the town. I'd recommend being careful, <laughs> especially you nibbles. Um, but yeah, if there's anything else you want to achieve uh, before nightfall, which is in, say, four or five hours. Yeah. You also said that we had a bag of holding, eh? Bag of holding and a rope of climb. That's it. Yeah, who wants to take that? Man, guys, look what we did by accident. That's yeah. what we can do on purpose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I never get over ropes of climbing. Yeah. Yeah, how do they actually work? Is it worth the plumbing just the... Just, bro it, it just never breaks, though, does yeah. it? It, it and can, like, like tie, it's just... tie its knots and stuff. Yeah. Cut its own knots and things, I think. Yeah. Um, it's like Elven Rope from Lord of the Rings. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Um, nah. Yeah, I wanted to go visit Bone Boy. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe get some traits and stuff. Um, cool. Yeah. So we can totally do that. Mm -hmm. Does anyone want to go with them? I'll go with them. Okay. With your hood up? I'm having it. Hood, hood, yeah, hood up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, do we have to go and visit these guys to get the things marked on the map, or is it just going to uh, No, I'll, I'll say they'll send messages, uh, messengers to you with their maps, but I'll just, when I give you the map, I'll just overlay it all so you can see the, the locations. Okay, so you two uh, head off through the town to Bone Boy Shack, which you passed when you first came in, so you know where it is, and you uh, arrive without incident, and come to the, the shack. It looks a little run down and primitive, uh, a lot of almost goblin design to it, it's, uh, and, and it's run by a necromancer, so there's a bit of gloomy um, gothicness mixed with old wood and, and uh, yeah, uh, twinings and stuff like that. And you come to the door. Mm -hmm. Is it knock on the door? Is it open? Yeah, it swings open quite easily. He's, he's open and he, you see him uh, at, there at the moment. He's examining some of his jars and he's shaking them and, and looking at them. And he turns and says, Ah, the White Slayers! Good! Oh, good. good to great. see you again. It's caught on. Cool. <laughs> no one's <we'll> just goes. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, Now, 
I remember where I know you from. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I, uh, I kind of lied. Sorry, it's just reflex. No, it's <laughs> totally understandable. Yeah. From being in your. Yeah. Um, but yes, Tinker Talk Sport. Yeah. This is a remarkable coincidence. So we haven't met, I've just kind of been yeah, nearby. Yeah, seen you in the. Yeah. I, I, often you just hang out in the shadows as Tinker Talk does his mm. business. And uh, yeah. And he says, so you've, you've come for the traps? If we can, if we can do that on the side, absolutely. I'm, I'm very interested in getting one of those, and I pointed his totem on his, on his yeah. Head. Yeah. What you actually? Oh, oh the bird, bird yeah. bones. And yeah. he says, ah, yes, yes. Uh, so you haven't got one yet from Tinker Top. No. no. Why? Why would that be? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe he wanted me to come out and see the world first. That's fair enough. And, and he says, and you notice that his totems, he has various heads and legs and bodies and little weapons, but they're all quite primitive. Mm. Um, some of them are skulls and uh, made of bone and um, wood and stone and, and things, but they're endearing in their own way. And he says, well, um, we can, I can, you scratch my back, I scratch yours, uh, you come back with some spirits and maybe we can look at putting you a totem together. Um, and maybe you can even use one of the spirits you capture to uh, infuse it and I bring it to life. That's the best way to do it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. you find your own spirit. Yeah. You don't see too many people doing that these days. That's what I run my trade in. And you see all these jars with lids on them, with runes marked on them, and they're all labelled. And some of them say, um, "Hang on, let me just find my notes here." You would like press it and hold. Or you have to press it once to. Oh, there you go. There you go. Right, better around. Yeah. yeah. So you see, um, <coughs> one just with pretty scratchy handwriting saying, "Weak, timid, minor spirit," and he says, "You don't want these. These hardly sell. If you find any of these in the wild, I'll give you ten gold." But what I recommend is learning how to charge the trap. I've seen you do magic. I think you can pick it up. Um, a lot of people can't. So when they use the trap, it burns out its charge and you have to basically take whatever spirit is caught. Um, but yeah, these ones are weak. And then you, you see a few other jars that say things like mild, angry, minor spirit and feral, raging, minor spirit. It says, that my traps are only strong enough to catch the minor spirits and the ones you want to catch are the feral raging minor spirits because they make the best fighting spirits for your totems yeah and you can tame them and you can calm them down but they always have that spirit to fight and he says if you get any of them i'll pay you a hundred gold for that spirit very hard to find and they often break my traps he says let me explain these traps to you mm. and he pulls one out and you see they're very basic they're um like six or seven bits of wood tied up and it hangs down with a sort of shiny crystal there and he says this is basically it but the secret is the the spell you cast onto it um there are people that can make way stronger traps out of better materials to catch stronger spirits but i have to uh, i can only do this and then he, you see him casting the spell and it does resonate with you. It's all, almost like what you were saying um, happened with the sleep spell. You can start to pick it up because it's an elemental spell. Mm -hmm. And he says, I call this Rhyme's Binding Ice. And normally when it's activated, and it, he'll, he'll put it in, he puts it in and then he takes the jar of the, um, the weak, timid spirit. He pulls the lid off and he just puts it in front of this uh, wooden teepee basically and the spirit is attracted to the little shiny thing it goes in there and as soon as it's in there this block of ice just forms around the legs and encases it and you can almost make out this form encased in the ice and it says yes see and it catches like this if you leave it overnight in anywhere but the, the great white the ice melts by the time you get to it and the spirit escapes but it stays frozen out in the great white so I give you these sticks and I infuse each one with the spell. Hmm. 
And when that spell is activated, that's the last. But if I can teach you the spell, mm. what that means is you can let that spirit go because I only give you 10 jars. I give you 10 jars um, to fill up. And all these jars of water to contain the spirit. And if you learn the spell, then you can keep doing the traps until you catch what you want. Um, of course, that means you have to stay out longer and longer every night to try catch what you want. Um, but yeah, you, you sort of play that game as far as you want to push it and try what you want to try catch. Great, yeah. Yeah. And he says, well, I can spend some time with you if you want to learn the spell. I can teach it to you. It's, a, it's not a basic spell, but I think you have the capabilities. Okay. And, but he says, first, can I help you with anything as well? Yeah, I've got an ancient spirit you might want. You see his eyes widen, and he says, How ancient? Before the establishment of yore. He says, Where is it? Where is it? Hey, hey, there was, like, holds a little cork. And he says, Can I look? Yep. And you see him, um, and he holds <coughs> the cork, and he sort of holds it to the light, and he's looking, and he's looking. And give me an insight check. So it was a nine. Do you get it over 15? Uh, so that was 12. 12. Oh, yeah, no, the luck zone doesn't activate for that, right? Well, then it'd only be 14, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, you don't actually pick up anything as you're looking at it. And he says, ah, yes, that is a, uh, that is a good spirit. I'll give you 200 gold for it. Do I get to keep the cork? Um, no, because I don't have anything strong enough to hold it. Okay. Well, if you can find something strong enough to hold it, it says, I'll, I'll give it. I'll tell you what. I'll give it to you for free. If I get the cork, you can see him weighing it up, and he says. Excellent. I know where I can get something stronger. It costs me a bit of money, but I think I, I come out good on the deal. Can you come and see me tomorrow morning? I can come and see you tomorrow morning before we leave, yeah. And he's, he says, excellent, delightful. Thank you very much. And then he says... Oh, this is going to last forever. <laughs> <laughs> and then he... So he, he starts to take you through the basics. Um, and though your storm aspect, you're kind of in tune with the elements too, like hail and yeah, ice yeah. And, yeah. and that. So you pick it up remarkably quickly. Um, he's... Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry, I'll get back to you. He's um, incredibly impressed and he says, I see a great spirit catcher in your future. Uh, you have remarkable ability. It's remarkable as you're starting to infuse these traps and he tests them out. And the thing is that creature has a chance to break out the, the rhymes binding ice is an actual spell mm -hmm. you can grab and you can just add that on top of your pool list okay cool. yeah it's a second level spell but it does require a constitution save to break out of so the spirits will get a constitution save to try break out of and that's based on your um spell DC. yeah yeah so as you get higher you'll be able to make a stronger mm -hmm. trap and this is the first stage of the traps, of course. You can start to hunt out better traps um, from different people mm -hmm. and things like that. Awesome. If that's something you want to do. Was there more? Yeah. Um, since you seem so keen on the spirit, maybe you would want to hook one of my friends up with a training totem. Well, I'm, I'm kind of happy too. I want to see what you bring back to me. Um, but I'm, I'm intrigued by you. I've never seen such natural ability. I think I'd kind of like to catch it myself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah, and then we can start you off. I mean, these totems here, you know Tinker Tox totems are masterwork, craftsmanship. It doesn't make too much of a difference to their fighting technique. It often comes down to the spirit and how much energy you can feed that totem uh, through your own magic uh, once they start fighting. But people like the prestige of the fancier looking tones. But I think you can make something quite primal and savage out of 
the ones here and they're not they're not terribly expensive most of my money is made on selling the spirits yeah. Yeah. i just have these to go with it but when you come back maybe we uh put that together and i oh oh and then, and then he says and and then maybe you can um Buy one of these as well. And he reaches down and pulls out a wisp board. Now, you might not know what that is, but uh, Zeph totally does. Mm. These boards are part of the gameplay with, when you use the totems. Mm. And he pulls out six tiles and he says, basically, with one hand, you're playing the tiles. And these tiles feed the totem either with strength or healing or... Um, magic to activate certain abilities that they can be taught and in the other hand you can cast your own spells into the little magical arena um, but yeah I can sell you one of these these are your basic boards and they go for 100 gold well yeah I mean if I come back and I'm alive I'll have money to spend <laughs> well let's pray for both and <laughs> also good. yeah the the tiles, you need six tiles to play it. Two are marked red, two are marked blue, and two are marked green. And they activate different things when they're slid over the board. And the board's made up of 16 squares of runes, basically. Um, and he says, yeah, 20 gold for each wooden tile. And if you want to try to get fancy, you can start to buy bone tiles, which um, wooden tiles sort of affect and act as a filter on the amount of magic that pours out of the wisp board into the totem. Bone tiles are less of a filter, and as you get better, you might be able to unlock fabled dragon bone tiles or whatever to add to your car. Oh, there's so much to teach you. I'm so excited. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he's very happy. And he says, and please, you come back tomorrow and we'll get that spirit out of your cork and free it up for free, right? I mean, if you want to throw in some money, that's fine. <laughs> we can discuss when you come back. <laughs> and, and he says, come on, you, you out. I have to go find this, uh, this container. And he sort of ushers you out of the door. Mm -hmm. And you see him close the door and put a <laughs> gone for 20 minutes sign on the door. And then he scurries off with his hood up and his cloak and disappears further into town. So there's this awkward part where you all have to walk together because you're all going in the same <laughs> direction but then yeah he actually turns off and roll me an insight check Zeph as you're watching him turn off just to see if you what was that 11 plus 15 oh, that's that's enough um you see him disappearing and going into a one of the stone wooden uh, stone stores, and there's a sign on it just called Big Juju. <laughs> 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 and he opens the door and sort of waves and closes the door and goes in there. And um, yeah, I think a mental mark of that one. That one. So he gave me some spirit traps. Uh, sorry, yeah, he gave you five spirit traps, and. Um, because the little shiny attracting crystal is the expensive part of that. But he's not charging you for them. They're a loner to bring back. And 10 warded jars so you can start to collect spirits while you're out there and, and figure out which ones you want to keep and throw away yeah. as you go. Awesome. Yeah. But yeah, keep in mind also charging those traps is going to cost you a spell slot yep. and stuff like that. So there's a fair bit of logistics involved. How many spirit jars are uh, 10. Yeah, so he, he gave them to you in a pack that you can carry um, and get back at some point. Reminds me of like a trading card pack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, was, I was thinking of Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah. 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 It's sort of, yeah, Pokemon battles yeah. and all of that going on. Wow, I've just got a whole lot of stuff in my inventory now. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, yeah, this just with this massive pack and... Okay, so everyone's done what they want to do today. Arthur, are you wanting to do anything? Uh, I think I'm pretty good, to be honest. Mm -hmm. So maybe 
you and Big O do find that there's a well-stocked bar in, in Gunther's... And some beers reflect yeah. on the events of the day. Yeah. <laughs> you see Big O disappear behind a bar and then suddenly hold up two bottles. Look what yeah. He said we could have everything, right? <laughs> and yeah, so yeah, you guys enjoy a few drinks and spinning some old yarns at the table while these two are out. Um, probably not going too hard because you've got a life-threatening adventure. Well, that's even more reason. <laughs> yeah. Going extra hard. That's right. Um, cool, so if you want, we can do your first day's trek out into the wild. Yep. And, yep. and uh, we'll get that started the first day. Um, so what we'll have is you get up early in the morning, mm -hmm. run to um, Bone Boy. Bone Boy. He slips you twenty gold. <laughs> no, was, like I found the insight check. So yeah, he's yeah. just going yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he takes the cork, and you see him bring out this um, bronze ornate vase with a big stopper on it. Mm. Um, you know that. Corks wouldn't consider that a cork. Yeah. So, so I'm just <laughs> ignoring it. <that. Yeah. laughs> and he then um, takes the jar, puts it on top, um, takes the stopper, gets a big hammer, and just smashes the jar and then shoves the, the sort of decanter stopper on it and puts it in and holds it. And you, you see a bit of fear in his eyes, <laughs> but then a bit of um, glee and almost rapture as he contains it and he puts it down and you can see this this uh, vase shudder slightly and he looks a bit nervous as he's <laughs> making sure the um, cork holds and he gets a few more of his lids and he puts it on and wraps it and, and he's like, okay. And then as he says, he's like, so yeah, 20, 20 cup. <laughs> and you can... <laughs> What's the slap? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And gives you 20 gold. And the cork back? Oh yes, <laughs> he says sorry, it's all right of course, and gives you the cork back. Oh, yeah. And so that means now that if you die, right, your spirit goes into that cork to be the next <laughs> spirit. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why I was just sorting it out. Now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, before Nibbles leaves, he'll look around the shop and see if there's any other like containers similar to that. Um, containers similar to the big fancy yeah. one? No, this is the one he's picked up from... Yeah, I just was wondering if there's any others around. No, and no, everything looks very shabby in here, like almost um, a home brew kit has been used, like a home brewer. All the jars are sort of just this leather with painted runes on them and, and wrapped. He doesn't have spirits like this one, they're quite, quite weak in his little shack. No, we'll kind of be putting something together, but he was like, nah. And yeah, he'll, yeah. He'll tell us that about it when he gets back. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're perfectly welcome to put A and B together and, and know yeah. that he's um, just, this is out of he's his He's just league. swindled me. Yeah, no, I've got that. <laughs> yeah. So I just added the Lux Stone and the Ring of Protection to my inventory and then mm -hmm. equipped them. Yeah. Did you know that the Ring of Protection adds plus one to saves as well? That, that's great. You're going to Yeah, need. that's fucking crazy because that yeah. and the Luckstone does. So all my saves have gone up by plus two. Mm -hmm. Oh, and so my... you can see it on your character sheet. Yeah, yeah. So you can add it into your inventory and then you can add it to the attunement thing. Yeah. And it put it all in. And the braces give plus one, but if you're not wearing any armor, they give plus two to AC. Okay. So my AC went from 15 to 18. Mine went from 12 to 15, yeah. Yeah, that's I awesome. Find them, Wait, how do you... How do you have 20 when I do shield. Yeah. So, yeah. so if you bring it up, have you got it added to your inventory? Yes, in that in my inventory. So if you... You should be able to equip it. Um, do you just do the check mark beside it to equip yeah, so it? You've, that one. Yeah, yeah, so equip that and then scroll down. And then there should be like an attunement thing, like if you just keep going down to the bottom. Was it braces? Yeah, it oh, so you go to yeah. items and oh, it should. Yeah. Oh, so it's got the items below. Oh, so, so then you can cool. click on the ones that you want to Sweet. add to your attunement. Yeah, I've because I've, I've got more than I can attune, but I've just added the ones that add to stats. Cool. Um, so you, your luck stone went in, is it? Yeah, luck cool. stone's in. So I've just got the um the ring of warmth from the choir cork. Cool. Not unattuned, but. Yeah, no, you'll need it all because you'll be doing a level 5 adventure. But you guys have been slaying the level 3 stuff, so... 
It could be all right. All the um, FF skulls hanging over the heads now. But so also just to make sure you're, you, because this is the high risk reward, you could have gone a safer path. So there could be character deaths in, in the future. Yeah, I think, I think we all figured that one out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which I think we can up the stakes now. You've been sort yeah. of cruising along, so see if it gets... No, no XP, but, right? I'm happy yeah. to desire. <laughs> well, yeah, I was also going to probably do quicker levelling too if yeah, you yeah. get through these... Uh, these tougher ones as well, rather than just picking flowers. <laughs> Top of the right <laughs> spells. <laughs> uh, yeah, and if you do, any of you prepare spells earlier, um, or is uh, you always just? I've always just got them. Yeah, druids prepare or have uh, them. Um, they are prepared. I don't think I'm going to do anything to get access to them. Yeah, because. Um, it's not like wizard, right? Where they have a yeah. No, I'm pretty wizards sure you're clerics, like clerics. I think prepare, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, do wizards? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they do. But they have to have a spell book that they can. Yeah, yeah. Because I know that from. sorcerers don't do they? No, I thought sorcerers. Sorcerers yeah. don't prepare. Yeah, yeah. they're just because one's like a knight and the others. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. You just got less spells that you that you can learn. Like like wizards can just learn millions of spells, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so we just had a long rest, right? Uh, yeah, you've woken up in the morning, Jake's. Um, yeah, so you might even ad- adjust what you put in your um, your 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 um, what's your court call? Tabernacle choir. Yeah, that one's oh, full full at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, I cast a sleep, so I'll just add like um, something. All right, so yeah, as you guys are getting up, having breakfast, and Nibbles walks back in, looking slightly confused, a little bit worried, <laughs> um, and sits down to have breakfast, you see the old ranger come in, and he's with him as a mousy, sort of middle-aged lady with big glasses, um, and she looks... Um, a little worried and not happy about the situation and the tall old ranger said ah if you don't remember my name I'm old Tom and I'll be taking you to the ruins it's going to take about three and a half days if we get you lot there alive I don't like our chances how long will it take us we did (laughs) it'd take a lifetime (laughs) He's pretty intense. <laughs> and yeah, when he says that, he looks off in the distance. <laughs> Take, him. Take him a lifetime. And the lady behind him rolls her eyes and, and says, and I'm the cartographer who's going to be mapping out the ruins that will validate our claim when we come to take it. I'm used to going with a way more experienced party. I'm not very happy about the situation (laughs) being escorted by... All I know about you is that you killed an old lady. (laughs) Um, And I'm just looking for her name as she introduces herself. Janice the Black. (laughs) (laughs) We also killed some gangsters, but nobody else saw that. A couple of goblins as well. And some goblins, yeah. Oh, that's very reassuring. Oh, and the pirates on the the mutineers. So it sounds like you just slaughter the (laughs) lowest level things in the (laughs) monster (laughs) room. Her name is Trimlane Turner. Trimlane? Trimlane. Trimlane. As though you've trimmed a lane. And I am a cartographer and a historian and a healer of sorts but I will not be engaging in combat but if any of you survive the night I can probably heal you up a little bit and apply um, some of my refreshing and relaxing music (laughs) Um, but yes your job is to keep me alive if I die and cannot map out the area um, and lay claim to the ruins then a, as per contract, the deal is off and they will have to bring in another cartographer. 
Is and I would not be happy either because... Are you like in a guild or something? I'm, part, I'm hired by Gunther. Um, but I, what makes you special? I am actually a trained cartographer, which I agree isn't, isn't hard, but I am also recognised as one of the leading historians in Winter's Edge. So <clears throat> when I look at these tombs, I should be able to ascertain what they are for and what time period was involved and bring back a lot more information than you would be able to. So I'm just saying, I'm not that I'm considering this at all, but if you died and we finished the map, mm -hmm. that wouldn't count. You would have to take it up with Gunther when you get back. Um, it might be enough, but he will also need to take in another historian to find out what the place is about, and I don't think he would Let's not happy. go there, it's not going to happen. Let's pretend that you are competent, and I will not die. I like that. I like pretending that I'm competent. <laughs> That's good. I think um, Big O will introduce himself to her as well. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be like, um, so I'm Big O. I don't even really know what a cartographer is, but I've got one of my boys who's got a cart, so I guess it's the same thing, so a lot of experience. Um, I know that you're not too happy about being escorted, but I've also dealt with escorts before. I've dealt with quite a lot of them, so you're in safe hands. You don't have to worry about that. Uh, we'll have a good travel. Don't worry, nothing's going to happen to you. There's one thing that these boys know is that we like to take care of the ladies, apart from Arthur, because he's still a virgin. Um, but maybe you'll so give I'm him a off, you know? So. <laughs> yeah, it's getting pretty infamous these days, but you know, we'll, we'll see what we can do about that you know maybe you'll get a bit more notoriety once we're back from this um but yeah you're in good hands girl so don't you worry yeah you just follow big o he you, won't lead you astray you get that familiar look that you see in lots of people when you've been talking to them for a while <laughs> <laughs> they're just kind of staring at you <laughs> going along as she says thank you now i am totally unassured <laughs> <laughs> and uh she says yes i'll be i'll be at the back and old Tom says, right, so uh, let's get you sorted out with the uh, yak worms. We've got a opening at gate one in about an hour. They'll let us through. We stagger adventurers going through because adventurers don't mix too well. There's a little bit of competition there. So the gate's going to be yours. Um, yeah, let's go have a look at the yaks. And as he walks out, he says, we've got a few casters here, right? Um, Cold magic, not so good out there. Lots of creatures, resistant. Fire magic, good. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, apparently we've heard you cast an ice knife <laughs> yeah. when you first tried to kill Betty the White. Uh, could still be effective, but not as good as you'd think. Cool. Hey, Matt, can I swap it out? Um, yeah, let's have a... I think about how we would do that flavor wise yeah. um i was i thought druids could were kind of like clerics where they could um because you were, no, i can't remember the rules i haven't looked yeah but yeah we can um so i think when you level up you can change spells right yeah you definitely can. yeah you can, like, so take, we can take, take one off or something yeah, yeah so we can definitely treat that as that sort of situation where you um Oh uh, yeah, I can change my list of repetitive uh, After, a, yeah, after a long rest, I can change my list of spells. That's right, cool. Yeah, I'll I'll say for the first day, I've still got it because it's, it's not going to matter. Okay. Oh really? <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then he takes you out to the uh, stables and he says, "Right, blow your whistles. Let's see what you got." <laughs> blow your whistles, and these uh, big giant worms. They. They're pretty high up, and they've all got saddles on them, and they've got about 20 of these big, stompy um, feet. And as one of you blows the whistles, it, it turns to you with a big, shaggy head. You can make out about eight eyes through the long, yak-like fur, and then it comes, and its legs undulate as it comes towards you, almost like on a tread, treadmill. And it comes up and just stands in front of you. And we'll, we'll say it's you, Nibbles. Okay. Um, and, and old Tom goes, up you get, lad. They're pretty tame. Nibbles all hop up then. Yeah. And you swing up and you find yourself sitting on this um, pretty well-made saddle. Uh, Adventurer's League saddle. Um, and he, he, he says, you just kick it when you want it to go forward and you pull on the horn when you want it to stop. 
Um, and if you ever lose them, blow your whistle and it'll come running if it's in air range. It's pretty simple stuff. Uh, we don't need to really train you with it. Uh, they all, all follow me, so I'll take the lead. And he leaps up on his one and says, uh, let's go, Betty. I named it after my favorite healer <laughs> from the uh, arena days. And he starts to move out and quickly you guys realize, oh, we've got to hop on. <laughs> And, and yeah, you all jump on and your worms start to form this long, long line and they're just undulating along, um, moving quite fast. Are they easy to ride? Because I don't think they've ever ridden all Yeah, this. yeah, it's crazy, but it's almost like trying to ride a horse that's being led or an elephant that's being led. I don't know how difficult that is, but yeah, these creatures are um, very stable for a start and they don't do any sudden movements and even when they do turn in that there's no great rocking because their legs are just um they're dealing with it their, yeah. their weight is so well distributed mm. with their leg movements that are just going through they're just i, I assume the, the the normal saddles and stuff have been adapted for us because we're all small yeah well they've taken that into ca- yeah. account <laughs> adventurous leg deals with all sorts so they've got all sorts of saddles and uh, even though he seemed to randomly throw whistles at you, they all work out and each saddle lines up to what you need. You get up to the, the first gate and old Tom leans down and you can actually see as you move up to the first castle, there's this big open gate that leads to this massive long bridge and above you, you can see about 40 grim arches looking down and it's hard to tell if they always look this grim or if they're just staring at you guys. Um, a wave. And what you see one of them do this and the commander goes, no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And, and old Tom says to the guy, here's the papers we're, we're coming through. We should be about a week, eight days at the most. If at all, you know what I mean? And they all laugh and you hear one of the archers yell out, I hope you do die! <laughs> and then the commander That's again. not very nice! <laughs> yeah. and, and then he leads you across this huge bridge. And as soon as you get out on the bridge, you feel this actually quite strong icy wind that's whipping through the ba- valley and you're quite pleased that you've got... Because the, the bridge isn't too wide, it's probably the width of this room, which isn't crazy, but... Um, and there's no walls on the sides of it. It's just this long one kilometer span of bridge. And you're glad you got your rings of warmth on because suddenly there's this icy wind that's howling through the, through the valley. And you make your way across in a long line with, um, we'll say, Trim Lane actually is about in the middle. And um, we can start to establish a party order now. How do you guys want to travel? You've got old Tom at the front. Who I'll wants to go? Pretty close to the front. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, Arthur, who's sitting easily on his saddle. Um, you've all got your winter gears on as well, right? You bought a heap of winter gears. We can have you wearing those as well. Um, cloaks, hoods, uh, your boots, and everything. Uh, who would be after Arthur? I'd probably go right after Arthur. Okay, and then we'll say Trim Lane. Yeah, yeah. Watching Big O move. <laughs> <laughs> And then, who would we have? Uh, the rules, maybe? Do you want to go yeah. last? Yep, yeah, I can go last. Yeah. I mean, okay. it's not like it's a vulnerable position or anything. But, yeah, <laughs> wow! <Well, laughs> <it's mad. laughs> or the archers fire. <laughs> the arrows. <laughs> the last one. Yeah, and, and you move across the bridge, and then you see the second castle. And again, there's a group of archers up the top there, grimly watching you as you come through, and you can hear them, see them leaning and talking. Some are laughing, but some look really grim. And old Tom waves and a few wave to him back. And then you find yourself going under this castle and again through a massive archway. Um, what's, what's going on there? I just have a feeling I know what's going to happen. You can tell me a Nothing weird. Nothing weird. <laughs> <laughs> we just had a checkpoint. Just, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then suddenly this archway opens up and you find yourself in the wildlands. And as soon as you hit the wildlands, the winds have picked up, there's snow swirling around. You're coming between two massive mountains where the castle sits through, and it's obvious the wind's hitting that and and swirling around. Um, There's 
uh, sprays of snow, um, the ground has that uh, mist of snow just being pushed around and your um, yak worms hit into it easily and just start churning through the snow, uh, weaving their way through as old Tom weaves his way through. Um, he, he yells back and it's not loud enough to drown out his voice but there's just a fair bit of wind whipping around and everything and and the visibility is quite low you can see um, you can see about say 120 feet out and then it starts to get misty snowy and uh, if you saw things you might just see shapes and not be able to make them out beyond that point and he yells first night we're going to be heading to uh, the old ruined town of uh, to Mule. Uh, there's a few ruins there we can stay in and camp the night. Shouldn't be too much trouble on the first day. Uh, maybe the occasional snow walk patrol. Sometimes the weaker snow trolls wander down this way. Nothing, uh, n nothing well, a normal party couldn't handle. And uh, yeah, occasionally uh, you get some of the wormlings flying around, but uh, they don't come this far south normally either. Um, so what we're going to do is just as you move through the snow, heads bow, walking through, we'll just roll for a morning encounter, a lunchtime encounter, and an evening encounter, see if anything happens. Um, so, and then you arrive at the town, but we'll see if anything happens. So, Joe, can you roll for the morning encounter, a 1d8? Hi, bro. And I'll just say, for this close to the city, yeah, if you roll a 1, there's going to be an encounter. Seven. Seven. And then, uh, Ben, see it. For the luck, you start to move through midday. One. One. <laughs> okay, can you roll me a D100? I'm just going to go to the buffer. You had one job. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that what we're playing the game for? Yeah. 77. 77. That's what we signed up for. Yeah. Party wife. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The archers watch you die just <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna be a good one. Why trade it? Yeah. 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 White dragon. We're white slayers, but so. Oh true. We're yeah. fine then. Oh, you just you just stayed in within the. Okay, that's good. So roll me a um, two d four. Two d four. Let's see. One and three. Oh, nice. Okay. Why are you smiling, Matt? No, it's just it's, it's good. That could have been way worse, but this is a. Good it could have been four and four. Yeah. <laughs> this is the quantity yeah. of whatever we're fighting. Yeah. Did you, what did you say? One and three. One and four. One and three. three. Yeah. One and one. <laughs> so <laughs> three. So let's just say this is the snow, the white lands, the wild lands, without any obstacles. It's just giving us a big flat arena. And if you guys can put yourself in your marching order, and I shall <laughs> this back. I was just going to go terribly. Uh, oh wait, I assume we're going that way. Yeah, I guess so. So I'll be behind you. Oh, I'm back here. The trim lane's behind me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, trim lane. Yeah. <laughs> can I turn around and talk to her before this thing happens? Yeah, sure. Because you've yeah, been travelling all morning. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah. So. Is this Arthur? Oh, Arthur. Yeah, yeah. and then I'm behind. So Arthur. there's old Tom and Trimlane. <coughs> so let's, uh, the morning's uneventful. You're uh, moving through, starting to get used to the uh, riding these things, which is, as I say, really easy. There's no even sway to get used to. They're just churning through the snow. And uh, you're aware that Trimlane is closely following you behind. So I'll just to get to know a bit better, I'll be like, this is way better than carts, eh? I know you're a cartographer, but you know, these things seem a bit faster. And you want to know something? <laughs> I don't know why I thought of this. 
<laughs> that ring of warmth was way too big for my finger. <laughs> Guess what? It wasn't too big for. <laughs> Give her a wink. Yeah. <laughs> Your head? He says. Oh shit! It was just a joke, lady. <laughs> And uh, yeah, she yells something that gets caught in the wind about what a cartographer actually does, but you don't catch it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe it's more fancy carts, you can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> As um, lunchtime starts to roll in, um, you have been also given rations, uh, just dried meats and turkeys. Uh, Jerky. <laughs> Jerky. <laughs> Jerky and stuff. So, and you find it quite easy to, you've got saddlebags on your um, yak worms as well, so you, you can just reach in and, and chew when they, it looks like old Tom's pushing on to get to these ruins and you're not stopping for lunch or anything. And uh, let's get everyone to make a perception check. And I shall roll for these guys as a group. Oh, that was bad. Oh. It doesn't matter. They rolled a natural one as a group. Um, so it doesn't matter at all? No. Oh, okay, uh, okay. Yeah. Waiting for you up ahead, you can see um, four blue orcs just start running towards you. Uh, they've got short bows and axes over their backs. And... Um, yeah, so the, the 2D4 was to see how many there were. Um, it's a small scouting party, but they are very aggressive. Um, they're dressed, as I say, the big, hulking, blue, got tattoos uh, shimmering over them, and lots of woolen, rough gear, uh, cloaks and, uh, and furs and everything. And they're, they're hollering a war cry as they obviously want to take you down. Uh, so initiative rolls. Oh, the oh, Jesus. <laughs> I haven't rolled above a 10 for initiative yet. So what does that give you, uh, George, in total? 24. 24. Does any of does that like stone add to initiative? Yeah, it does. It added plus one. Oh, 24. Because <laughs> your initiative is your dex bonus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and what did you get, Seth? Uh, nine. Nine. And Arthur? Eleven. And Nibbles? Thirteen. I think it's the lowest initiative I rolled. Okay, so let's roll for Big Tom as old Tom. <laughs> Ten plus three. And put him. Remind me to ask how, like, what is the longest distance that Big Tom shot? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we'll go for the orcs, let's say. Four? Five. Fourteen plus one, fifteen, orc. Seventeen plus one, eighteen, orc. And a six plus one is a seven orc. Okay, and I shall make them. Oh no, Moper's legs fell off. Hmm, he does. Oh, I have to glue them. So we'll make these all the coloured. Okay, and so they are running from, we'll say, this angle here in a, a line. They've basically spotted your caravan uh, moving through. Uh, they are a scouting party charging through. Big O, you get the, the first move. Okay, so I can only move 35 feet. So I take it we're not on the things once we start this, like we're not mounted? Yeah, they're easy to jump off okay. and uh, start moving, yeah. Can we stay mounted? Uh, yeah, old Tom. Um, yeah, old Tom's probably going to fire from above. They, these mounts move forty feet, but you can't really control them yeah. as of yet. Okay. Because you can't do diagonals in D and D, yeah. Can you? 
<laughs> this, is the, this is the thing I have arguments with people about. <laughs> yeah. Um, ben played it one diagonal and then, and then just yeah. normal movement. Yeah, I'm happy with So, like, I could take an initial diagonal, which is like my first five feet, and then it's like five, ten. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. Uh, so, it's 35, so I'll go five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five, thirty-five. Um, and I'll take the dodge action, I think. Yeah. Do you get a, your step of the wind if you wanted to dash? Yeah, but I've got to spend a key point on it, yeah. and I'm kind of just like, I don't really want to spend a key point. And so you probably don't want to get too close, because otherwise that doesn't... Yeah, 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 but that's so true too. Yeah, but um, I'm not... Yeah, I don't I, know. Yeah, I think dodge is a good idea then. Because mm. the, two of them are up Or, next. could I instead of taking dodge, use my action to take a hit of the whiskey? Uh, yeah, well, you get a bonus action to take a hit of the whiskey. Okay, well, can I take dodge and then bonus action hit of the whiskey? Yeah. Which improves my armor class by two, right? Yeah. Cool. So the yeah. big guy just walks up and just... <laughs> Come at me. So, yeah, so I've taken dodge and my armor class is now 20. Whoa. Um, I'll make sure so that gives them disadvantage on attacks against you, right? Dodge. Mm, does it? Does yeah. dodge yeah. give disadvantage? Yeah. Okay. I don't know if it was just like you straight up get to avoid it or... No, just disadvantage. But with an armor class of 20, it'd be pretty good. Yeah, cool. Sweet, so that'll be me for that turn, and I'll just update my inventory with the fire whiskey. It's at half now. Okay. So, yeah, two of them um, drop their bows as they see you charging and pull out their battle axes and bear on to you. So we'll say two are attacking you. Foreshadowing, so that guy's already down. So, <laughs> yo, okay, so they add plus three to hit. So, the first roll at disadvantage is a oh, eight. Is first, first one misses as you take a sip of your as you're sipping your potion. He thinks he's got an easy hit, comes in, and you sway back. Drunken masterly as he misses, and then the second one, he rolls a seven, so he's not going to get higher than that. Yeah, and suddenly you see Big O just leap off his saddle, rip through the snow, taking a swig as these two orcs bear on him, and swinging the axes, and he starts just to dance and sway, and <laughs> still while he's drinking his, his whiskey, and uh, avoids them. Not done, and then we go to Nibbles. Um... These guys aren't resistant to. Oh, I won't tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> They're not resistant to your eyes. Okay, so Nibble's gonna jump off. Yeah. We go 5, 10, 15, 20. Send here. And 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Cool. And I'm gonna summon a flaming spear right here. So what does that do? So right next to them? Yeah. Um, so if they end their turn or. I ram it into them, they take five damage. Okay. And then they've got to make a save. Yeah. Does it have like a range of five feet or something? Yeah, five foot range. So you can, can't you ram it now? Yes, for my bonus action. Okay. But, um, because it's a concentration, I can still, I can still use it during wild shape. So I'm going to wild shape. I see. Yeah, that's my bonus action this turn. And so next turn, I'll also I'll be able to melee yeah. and direct it. So none of them are in the sphere at the moment. No, no, no. I, you have to summon in an unoccupied spot. Oh, so okay. I've done that. Nice. Um, and then I will wild shape into something different this time. Oh, well, he's, he's too traumatized to go into the jungle. <laughs> <Yeah. genre. laughs> um, I'm going to wild shape into a dire wolf. Ooh, Perfect. Like a with snowy big bunny ears. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a, a snowy dive wolf. With big bunny ears? Oh yeah, he, yeah uh, bigger ears than everything is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so as you're running along, you see Nibbles start to weave his hands and suddenly a sphere of fire forms next to one of the orcs and then he drops down to all fours and carries on running and shifts into this huge white wolf with bunny ears. <laughs> Nice, so that's your turn, right? Yeah, that's me. Big Tom curses as he sees uh, O just run into this mix, thinking he's a madman, but he's going to fire one of his arrows. He's, uh, he can only shoot once as well. 
11 plus 4 is a hit. Yeah. Which one's he shooting? Um, we'll say the one not next to the sphere, the other one okay. that's dealing with you. As you dodge his axe blade, he's suddenly open to the shot, and old Tim does four points of damage. Old, old Tim. <laughs> old Tim, <laughs> hey? Old Bringing Tim. it back, bro. <laughs> <laughs> is that who this character is in the heart and soul, bro? He used his finger. And so they have 12 hit points. So he's down to eight. Suddenly an arrow bursts into his shoulders and erupts with the feathers and old Tam says, Yeah. <laughs> As he looks in the distance. And uh, Arthur. Cool. I'll uh, jump off my worm. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Oh. Um, I'll crack a rage. Okay, while I'm running crack over. A rage. <laughs> crack a rage. <laughs> yeah, so that's um, your bonus action, right? Snowy bastard. Write um. <laughs> <laughs> your story, Buzz. Fuck off. Yeah. Fuck off. yeah. <laughs> um, sweet. And. Oh, yeah, I'll attack. And I also have ancestral protect- protectors now. Okay, so explain how that works. So, starting when you choose this part at third level, spectral warriors appear when you enter your rage. While you're raging, the first creature you hit with an attack on your turn becomes the target of the warriors. Which hinders its attack. So if I take this guy, they... Get disadvantage or...? Yes, I think it's just disadvantage on attack rolls that aren't against me. Mm. Okay. So if I try to attack through the... Okay, so let's add a little bit of flavour to that. As Arthur's running... Oh, and and if, 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 they, if he does attack someone else, that person has resistance. Okay, so one thing. Um, you might want to slightly move... Um, the the sphere, any creature within five feet, when they end their turn, they have to make a saving throw. Yeah. Oh, I'll risk it now. <laughs> yeah. uh, no. I'll go around this way. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's on range, but... Yeah. yeah. And so you're saying if, if they're near you, but they attack Big O, he so gets your barbarian resistance. It's only the first, the first thing I attack on that turn. Oh, so whatever you attack, if, whoever that... Um, orc attacks either gets they Get get resistance re- right, that's very cool attack. Yeah. yeah so let's uh, describe what happens you see Arthur leap off his horse uh, his worm and start to you see him starting to roar and his eyes turn red and this use this whole um, wild wildlands there were many wars fought on here including between Humans and dwarves on one side against frost giants. And a lot of battles were fought, a lot of men died. And as you start to roar, you start to notice coming out from the ground um, primal spirits that start to run beside you. Dwarves um, feeding off your anger and, and rising with you. And as you come in, you suddenly feel stronger and protected as, as though you're running in a pack. And, and your ancestors are at your side. So, do you get to attack? No, I, I'll go. I'll wait till next time. Okay. I and can just imagine Zeph being like, pulling out the traps, chasing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Do it again. Do it again, Arthur. Keep so raging. I can I borrow one of your ancestors? Run, 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 run. <laughs> okay, so that's Arthur's turn, and it goes to Zeph. Right, yo. Anything I get in a burn thirty. Yeah, alright, we'll go down there. And for flavour, when he gets off his worm he actually flies for like ten feet. Oh. Briefly, and I will witch bolt the yeah, guy there. Cut right in front of O. So is that against his armor class? Mm-hmm. That is not a hit. That's ten. Ten. No. So, what does your witch bolt look like? Um, it's it, well, it acts, it's just a lightning bolt, which if it hits, stays there mm-hmm. and connects That's me right. and, yeah. and him. So it's just like, like it hasn't actually ever worked yet so far. So he's just like, I hope it works this time. Fuck. 
Yeah, so you see Zeph step off this worm and then sort of almost spider-like tendrils of lightning spread across the ground as he drifts um, 10 feet before landing and then he gathers that lightning and, and throws it across the uh, ice scape at, uh, at the orc but it, it flies past wildly. Still hard to control as it arcs and weaves and uh, splays across the distance. Okay, and we've got the next two orcs. So we're going to say... One will move into attack um, Arthur with his battle axe, and the other one stays back and also shoots, we'll say, the weaving, dodging monk with his bow. So the first one gets disadvantage. Oh no, you've got to hit him, eh? So yeah. it's just a normal attack. But he rolls a four plus three, seven. Yeah. So you duck his swinging, uh, wild swinging axe, and the other one shoots at George, who's still weaving and twisting, so it's at disadvantage. So the first one's going to be a 16, and that'll be his best roll, probably, and a natural one. So yeah, he fumbles the arrow as he's trying to uh, load his bow and doesn't even get a shot off on his turn. Yeah. And then we go back to the top, to Big O. So we look at the uh, guy with the arrow, just like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I'll... I'll swing on the dude like right in front of me because you've hit this guy with a arrow, eh? Uh, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll tom to Okay, so yeah. I'll make an unarmed strike against him. 13 is where you're going to be. Yeah, I got 13 cool. um, plus 5, so 18. And it's a 1d4 plus 3. Cool, 7. <sighs> almost, almost drops him. He's down to 1. He's down to 1. Um. And for my bonus action, I'll just do an unarmed strike. I won't flurry up close because cool. I don't want to spend the key point. Cool. 19, Actually, 24. Nice. Well, so that's going to, yeah. It's going to yeah. kill him. Yeah. yeah. So you've been weaving and ducking as you're drinking a potion and then, uh, drinking your whiskey. Then you suddenly throw out two quick rights that just drill this orc into the ground and he just drops and falls back. Um, Dead, almost rigor mortis setting in quickly as cool. his, his hands clutch the sky. Shall I just take him off the map? Yeah, um, he was he was next. Cool. And then I'll use my movement to go up to this dude. So I'll go. Oh, it's one diagonal first. Day. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, and I'll just end my turn there. Nice. Good, good turn. And so the orc that was beside you. Did he get an opportunity of attack? Yeah, he should do. Yeah. Okay, so, but you've still got a 20 armor class. Yeah. But it won't be with the dodge action. There won't be yeah. any dodge applied to it now. Yeah. So he rolled a natural one. So, yeah, <laughs> you easily, you, let's say you do a little gnome dive roll as his axe swings up and then you come up and you're, you're bearing down on this startled guy with the bow. Um... And then, as he misses you, he brings his axe down onto Arthur. It's that orc's go with a 16 plus 3, 19? Yeah, it'll hurt. Okay, and it's a 1d8 plus 4. That's good, your rage keeps going then. 10. So it'll so be 5. five. Yeah. yeah. Nothing. And, yeah. <laughs> That's like a third of my... <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, this axe bites deeply into your shoulder during, during first blood. And you can hear your ancestors roar in anger as their living boy gets hit. And then we go to Nibbles. Hold on, was that the, this guy here? Yeah. So he ended his turn there, right? Yeah. So what does that mean for the... Oh, uh, he takes damage. Um, yeah, so... You're not smart. <laughs> he, he's going to make a saving throw. Okay. Uh, deck saving throw. He rolls a 17. Ah, uh, yeah, he, he beats it, but he still takes damage. Takes three, six, so that's nine, half, so four. Four, yeah, five, that's pretty good. Down eight. That's a yeah. brutal spell. Yeah, so the flaming sphere suddenly flares up and he, he screams in surprise as he was just ignoring it, thinking it was some harmless fire next to him. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that was... A bonus action to do? Oh, you didn't no, do that, anything. That really. wasn't my turn. Yeah. Oh, that's a good so, spell. Yeah. Now my turn. Mm -hmm. Bonus action. I ram it into him. Okay. So, so it flares 
already burning him and then suddenly yeah. plunges towards him. Yeah. And so, is it another saving throw? Another saving throw. Now 17 again. Okay, okay. So four, uh, five, so nine, four damage again. Okay, and he screams in even more pain as the flames erupt around him and he finds himself surrounded. So is that in his space now? Yeah, that's on him. Yeah. On his face, yeah. As his furs and everything start to ignite. Sweet. And do you get an action too? Yep, so my action... Um, that's pretty cool. I'm going to... I've got 50 feet of movement now. Wow. Yeah, so I'm going to... 5, 10, 15... Oh, I should have gone. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Go right next to this guy. Would that give... Oh, he's already used his reaction for the first yeah. opportunity attack. Um, so then I will do a bite attack. But I've got pack tactics because Arthur's there. Yeah, <laughs> nice. So... Um, it's advantage, is it? Yeah. So that was 19 plus 5, so yeah. 24. Yeah. Um, this, is a, this is a different orc, eh? Not that wounded one. Not the wounded one. This is yeah. the, the Fargo. Um, so that is 2d6 plus 3 person. So 3, 3, so 6. So tw- 6, 9 piercing damage. And then he, because it's a, a bite me the attack from the wolf, um, he needs to make a oh, strength yeah. saving for yeah, a throw or yeah. Nick get not prone. Nice. So he rolls a 13, but they're quite strong, so 16? Yeah, the DC was 13. So oh, yeah. Cool. But still, great turn. Um, you said to step it up, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, big leads now. Yeah. Okay, so old Tom sees the one on fire and launches an arrow at him. With a 5 plus 4, a 9. His arrow flies wide as he's shooting from his mount. And now Arthur. Sweet. I'll just swing on this guy. Nat one. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All the spirits that are around you just turn and walk off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, yeah. So you've taken an axe to the shoulder from him and then you try to reply, but he leans back and you're... This swings wildly, but you get a bonus action as well. Uh, I think it's like a 13. You need a 13 to hit. So, yeah, your big right misses, but your left hand comes up and catches him across the jaw. And he has four hit points. Oh, sorry, he has three hit points. Seven hit points. Okay, so yeah, you, sorry. <laughs> you drop him. And he joins his friend in the snow, another corpse. Um, that was Arthur. Every, that's all your movement? Yeah, no, it's, it's all good. It's good. Okay. Zeph? So the guy in the flaming sphere, is he actually lying down or is he just... That's just as many lying No, he's, he's just standing there. Yeah. 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 Um, is he wearing metal armour by any chance? No, they're all in uh, for his armour class 13. So. That's all right. Um, I'm going to... Let's see. Here. And because I haven't been able to do it, I'm gonna use a sorcery point to distance spell and make shock and grasp 30 feet range. Nice. So more lightning comes from your other hand. It's all you. lightning with me, man. And that is 16. That's a hit. Yeah. It's got four hit points. Six. Okay. So this orc on fire thrashing around. You reach out and suddenly a wave of lightning washes over him and he freezes up and uh, tenses as it grasps him. You can hear bones cracking, flesh burning, and then he, he just drops and his last breath fills the air as he dies. One orc left, the little bow guy. Is there any one? What happens to the... the... Is it just took out breath? He oh, did he? Oh, did he? Yeah, oh, sure. He him. You guys... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're, if you roll over 80%, it would be a, a snow, snow troll. <laughs> and you got 77. Yeah, first day is pretty easy. I just come across a small scouting party. We could have rolled two, two, eight on the D4, so that wouldn't have been so easy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and so he's got Big O in front of him. Um, 
He's going to drop his bow, pull out his axe, and take one swing at you as he sees you advancing. And that's an 11 plus 3 is 14, which won't do it. Um, yeah, suddenly with the, all these magical enhancements and your new training, you're reading his attacks easily. He's almost telegraphing them and you're watching as they almost fly past you in slow motion as you wheel and deal. And now you get to attack him. Cool. I'll just straight swing on him. 14. It's a hit. Cool. He's full health. So that's four damage. Four damage. And then I'll use flurry of blows on him. Cool. So that's a key point. Which is two more unarmed strikes. 17 plus five, so 23, mm -hmm. 22. Six damage. Okay. Um, right fist, left fist, knocks him to his knees, but he looks at you with a bloodied eye, bloody black eye that you've already down to him. Uh, two plus a seven. So yeah, yeah, the last one misses. And he sort of fends you off with his battle axe to uh, avoid the last blow. Um, cool. Um, and because of my drunken technique, I can disengage from him and move 10 feet away. So I, I cool. I'll just go. Nice. I haven't even properly moved yet anyway, but yeah, I'll just move the 10 feet. Yeah, he totally misreads you as you, you start to move in this haphazard fashion and doesn't get an opportunity attack on you. And then we go to uh, Nibble. You see um, Big O dealing with the art last or punching and then moving away in a is this weaving black motion. thing here. Is this a wall or a No, it is no. just, oh, just all nothing. white snow. Yeah. Okay. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Oh, 30. <laughs> He's showing off all his movements. Just yeah. running around. Um, yeah. so, oh, so the flaming spear will track right next to him. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I will run and attack him. 5, 10, 15. <laughs> Probably over the camera. <laughs> um, yeah, so. Oh, no one's there. <laughs> yeah. Um, Drunken so, guy wheeled away. Oh, wait, is he within. Hold on. Is he still within? Hold on. 10 feet? Yeah. Yeah, he is. Yeah, I only moved 10 feet away from him. Dorm. Um, so pack tactics kicks in. <laughs> oh, Die wolf howls. Within five feet of the creature and the other isn't in ours. Oh, damn it. Um, so, natural 20? Oh. <laughs> 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 you can't <laughs> <talk. laughs> <laughs> 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 20. Yeah, you rip his throat out. You join his clamp in. Three. You shake him wildly around in the snow. 12. 13, 14, 15 piercing damage. Yeah, and, and then your bloody maw rips his throat out and he convulses slightly and falls to Classic still. nibbles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and old Tom cheers and says, Ah, oh, there might be hope for us yet, lads. Well done, well done. And uh, he says, Well, stop here celebrating. Get back on the mounts. We've got to get oh, to the ruins. Hold up, hold up. I'm going to go around and just start cutting off their hands. Very Take smart. Take hands. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's eight hands. Eight yeah. hands. Eight. Can we just, can I check their bodies for any loot? Yeah, they're, they're, they don't really deal in coin and stuff. They've just got uh, weird sort of pouches full of, like, rabbit paws and teeth okay. and stuff like that. Cool. Yeah. Rabbit paws? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can I get one of the rabbit paws out and put it around my neck? <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be your new hobby. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, snow rabbit paws and stuff like that, yeah, so you rip their throat out, you, you've you got your revenge. Yeah. And yeah, you mount up again. I just leave the flaming sphere on one of them for a bit. <laughs> okay, so you move into, as the sun starts to set, let's make, big O, make one more 1d8, just to make sure there's no encounters. It was seven. A, 1d10. That was. Oh, was it? Yeah. Oh, shit, sorry. Yeah. Five. Five. Yeah, so there's no further incidents. As you see, there's um, snow covered ruin of about six buildings. One's actually still uh, two stories high, but the roof's all caved in, made of stone, and there's rotten wood. You can see there was a small hamlet here at, at some point. And um, old Tom says, We've got two. 
we've got a few choices we can make where we stay. There's a basement in that two-story uh, two-story building. We can stay down the bottom there if we want. Just not many escape routes if anything goes wrong. Or we can stay upstairs um, and there's shelter there. Or we can just stay in one of the buildings. What do you lads think? Easy, bro. We bought tents as well. Whatever you like. Uh, we might as well use these uh, natural shelters we got here in the ruins. Some of the houses are still. So let's just say you find a um, a house that's still well insulated. None of the snow has um, fallen through into the the building. Um, all the furniture's broken and scattered. It's been well looted. Um, creatures have been through here, but for tonight. It, you don't need to light a fire because of your ring of warmth and you've got your food, you don't need to cook your food. So Jake, we'll just get you to roll a 1d8 for tonight. Out. Oh, can I snap? Yes, yeah. yeah. So yeah, we can say there is one main entrance. The other are uh, backed up with snow. So the windows are um, backed up with hard packed snow and that. So the door's been uh, cleared out. So you can set a snare across there. Five. Five. And yeah, because you're only a day away from um, the main castle and their patrols, which they still do regularly up to this point, you've made your first day into the wildlands. Old Tom sits with him and says, it gets worse from here though, lads. The patrols don't extend out any further than this town. Uh, we'll be on our own from here. But you did well today. You did well. Um, and the bard, the trim, trim lane, um, says, uh, let me tend to those wounds, and she rests a, a hand on you, and you can see her start to sing a soothing dwarf song. That, she um, dwarf? No, she oh, just knows she the song. Um, <laughs> She's like, something. yes, it's my time. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Lens in halfway. She's, no, I'm just human. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that's day one, and then from here I'll set up the um, rest of your adventure. Absolutely.